Hi, I'm Holly Fry. And I'm Tracy V. Wilson. And we are standing on the grounds of the House of the Seven Gables, which is a large enough piece of property that it is its own National Historic District. Yes, there are multiple other historic buildings that have all been moved here to preserve them and to add to the site, including behind us, the actual House of the Seven Gables. And we have lined up an expert to tell us all about this property and also to show us around. So let's get right on it. I'm David Moffat, and I'm a lead interpreter and researcher at the House of the Seven Gables. So the House of the Seven Gables is also called the Turner Ingersoll Mansion. Can you tell us a little about those families? Yeah, the Turner and Ingersoll families were both merchant families in the history of Salem. The Turners were the ones who built the house in 1668. John Turner was a mariner who would trade the commodities from Salem, codfish and lumber down in the Caribbean for sugar and molasses, and over in England for the manufactured goods and textiles. And so he made a good fortune and built a huge mansion on the Salem Harbor, and then passed it down to his son who made an even larger fortune. And his grandson ended up, ended up losing the family fortune. So near the end of the revolution, the house was sold to the Ingersoll family. And Samuel Ingersoll was a merchant trading around the world in that period that follows the revolution, the Great Age of Sail as we call it, when Salem merchants start trading across the entire globe. Samuel Ingersoll made a huge fortune in that and then his daughter Susanna inherited the house and ended up living in it longer than anyone else in the house's history. And so there's a, a rich uh, history of several generations of two very interesting Salem families. Uh, also on this property is the house that Nathaniel Hawthorne was born in. Can you talk a little bit about the decision to move the house to be with the rest of the property and then how that was accomplished? Yeah, in, in 1958, the house was about a half mile away on a side street called Union Street. Uh, down uh, the House of the Seven Gables, our parking lot sits on Derby, so it was just a sort of straight shot down Derby Street. And the house had been in private hands. Uh, one family had owned it since the 1880s. And when they passed away in the 1950s, there was concern that the house was going to be torn down. There had been some uh, preservation concerns about it earlier on in the 20th century. And so working with the uh, Society for the Preservation of New England Antiquities, or Historic New England as it's called now, the House of the Seven Gables purchased the Hawthorne birthplace and moved it down the street and then restored it to look as it would have when it was being lived in. Can you tell us about how the House of the Seven Gables is simultaneously a historical site with historical accuracy, but also the recreation of a fictional world? Yeah, I like to call it the first postmodern house. That it's a house based on a book that had been based on the house. So in its very structure, it's got this sort of intertextual nature between the written word and the actual structure itself. That Nathaniel Hawthorne had gotten the inspiration for his work visiting his cousin. His cousin was Susanna Ingersoll, who lived in the house longer than anyone else, who owned it from the early 1800s till her death in 1858. As he was visiting an actual house and hearing stories about its history and his family and Salem, and he writes this great novel in 1851, and then the fame of the novel helps to save the house. There wasn't a great interest in old houses in New England in the 1860s or 70s. It started to grow around that time, but the House of the Seven Gables started to attract interest. People started taking photographs of it, they were selling postcards starts to appear in some of the early visitor guides to Salem in the late 1800s. And the family that moved in after Susanna Ingersoll moved out had so many people coming and knocking on their door, asking to see the inside of the house. They started to charge admission and sell souvenirs. And so the, the fame of the novel made the house this sort of tourist destination even before it became a museum. So Caroline Emerton chose to take those some of the elements from the work and put them into the house to make it something even more familiar to the visitors that were coming. Uh, what do you think surprises visitors the most when they come to visit the House of the Seven Gables? I 
think they're surprised by how much history there is here. That a typical tour, we can direct a lot of the time towards people's interests that whether someone's interested in immigrant history in early industrial America or the 17th century and Puritanism or decorative arts or the maritime trade, there's so much that is covered by the buildings on our property and the history of the people that live within them that there are so many different stories to tell that people come away really surprised by just how much there is here.